Yeah, it was a party. I think, like Leah said, um, we, we like to have a good time. So, uh, yeah, we were dancing on the stage and it was lovely to see everyone out there. Is that what you imagined it was going to be like? I didn't, I didn't know what to expect, um, but it was, it was everything and more. I think the whole event around Wembley was just amazing. And then to celebrate in London like that was really cool. Mm. I mean, you've done so many interviews. You've chatted to loads of people. You've literally not stopped, have you? What, what does it feel like? And did you imagine this kind of, kind of media fun that you're having now? Yeah, it's been a bit surreal, really. I think, um, obviously, football was the most important and it always is the most important. And then now getting opportunities like this to speak about it and, and share some memories is really cool. But yeah, it was an amazing month of football um, and one that we'll remember for the rest of our lives. What's been the craziest thing that's happened to you since it? Um, there's been a few weird things. Someone named a, an alpaca after me or something. I don't know. But yeah, um, <laughs> just lo loads of fun, just enjoying the moment and yeah, loving it. Yeah, you mentioned that because actually Mary Earps has had a bus named after her. Yeah. Lucy Bronze, a pizza shop. I think we can do better than an alpaca. <laughs> I know, I need to get out there, see, yeah. see what else is on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness me. Um, you're obviously loving it. The players were loving it. It was really good to see Serena kind of let her hair down as well. Yeah. What, what was she like with the, with the celebrations? Because we see a different side to her than you do, don't we? Yeah, I mean, she's, she's been brilliant. I think you saw on the clips then, she had a little celebration in the changing rooms. Um, so, yeah, it, it was nice to, once kind of the, the win was over, you could in, enjoy it with, with everyone and just celebrate all together. And part of those celebrations but were gate crashing the press conference. You were stuck in a doping room, weren't yeah. you? Oh, Unfortunately what a so, yeah, what a right. Shame. I missed out on all of that. I saw Mary up on the table, yeah. though, which was funny. Um, but, yeah, I was in doping. Um, I mean, my luck getting it after the final, but it's just part of football. But, yeah, that, the, the celebrations in the press conference was really cool. Whose idea was it? I don't know. I think one person just went out and then everyone followed along and then suddenly everyone was out the dressing room and, and in with Serena in the press conference. Does, does that sum it up, actually? That it's not just one doing one thing. It's all of you very much together and that, that team spirit. Yeah, I think that's how we were all tournament and one of the reasons why we were, we were so successful is the group was really, really special um, and we loved being together and, and enjoying the, the month away. You're away for a long time and you have to find ways to, to switch off, but it was nice being in each other's company. You might get a bit of separation anxiety. You've I know, yeah, them, yeah, you? yeah. I've been together for like about nine weeks now, <laughs> all in total, including the prep camp, so yeah. Mm. Uh, what, what did you try and, and do throughout the tournaments to, to, I guess, to switch off because you have to have that side of it, don't you? Yes, as a football, as a concentration, as a tactics, there's everything that comes with it. But what did you do to kind of do that? Uh, we had a really nice setup at our hotel and obviously the weather was unbelievable. So we mm. were outside enjoying, enjoying that. There was a little coffee hut that we had and people would just sit outside, have a coffee, have a chat. And there was, we were right by the River Thames. So, um, you could get on a little higher a boat through the hotel and just go up and down. But yeah, it's really important in a tournament like that to to be able to switch off and enjoy like the training when you're in it, but then also relax and and get your mind ready for the next day. Yeah, uh, part of what we loved was the excitement when yourself came off the bench and others as well. It was all about you super subs. You knew from the outset, didn't you? Serena said that's exactly what she expected of of you girls who were coming off the bench. Has she told you what you might need to do to, to maybe start in the future? Look, I think I love playing for England. I always have and, and I always will. So I'll take any opportunity I can get. I think, again, everyone knew their role in the team and, and it worked. So mm. the methods that, that were put in place were brilliant. And um, it, you really can't win a tournament like that without every single player and every single member of staff. It really is a, a whole group um, effort. So, yeah, I think obviously I just got to keep working hard and, and keep playing and, yeah, keep getting better. But the squad is so competitive yeah. and, and I love being a part of it. Yeah. What about after the semi-final? I know lots of people, is she going to change? Is she going to change? Is she going to make changes to her lineup? Did, did ever inside you think, oh, maybe I might get stopped? Maybe this, the, the final's going to be that game? I just, to be honest, no. I think in the tournament you're just so focused on winning. That's all that matters. So whatever part I can play in, in giving the team any help is is perfect for me. And yeah, the team were excellent throughout. And from game one to game six, the the performance was brilliant. Did you set like 
individual targets, like how many goals perhaps you wanted to score or maybe assists or the contribution that you wanted to have? Not really, no. I went in it um, into the tournament quite uh, relaxed. It, it was my first major tournament, so I wanted to make sure I enjoyed it and uh, learnt from all the players that have, have been there before. And I think for me and a lot of the younger girls going, going into your first tournament, I mean, it was amazing and, and so special that we were, we were able to win it. But yeah, kind of went into it and, and just wanted to make sure that you enjoy every day because it, you're away for a long time. You're away from home, you're away from your routine. So um, yeah, just wanted to make sure that everything was taken in and I didn't let it, let it pass. OK, take this in. Third top scorer in the tournament, right? Four goals. I mean, despite not starting a game, what does that look like? How, how do you feel looking at kind of when the stats are broken down? Yeah, um, I mean, I love scoring and creating goals as a striker. I think that's your job for the team, obviously, in possession. So, yeah, it, I, I didn't expect it. It was nice to come off the bench. We have world-class wingers and, and midfielders that can get you the ball and put you in. And then up top, it's my, your job to finish it off. You're obviously very good friends with, with, with a lot of the girls as well. It must be really nice when it's, you know, you've got your, one of your good mates, Beth Mead, up there, top scorer of, of the tournament. That's some achievement, isn't it? Yeah, Beth had an unbelievable tournament. Not only six goals, I think she had five assists. Yep. And, yeah, she was on fire from, from the first game. And when she scored a hat-trick against Norway, I think we always would say that she's so clinical in front of goal. And, and you could see that um, throughout this tournament. She's so composed and... Yeah, fully deserved to, for all her awards. Mm. You're obviously new to this. You're young. It's your first tournament. Serena wiegmann has been around and been there, done it before, and used that winning experience, carried it through and executed it absolutely perfectly. Just how crucial was her experience throughout the tournament guiding you? Yeah, massive. I think that she is a real winner. Um, and in training, it's so competitive. Like... That stems from Serena, but also the girls. Like we're all so hardworking and want to mm. improve every day, even throughout a tournament. So we never really take a day off on on the pitch. But um, yeah, she was crucial. She set the standard on the pitch and off the pitch. Kept us really humble and, and grounded, and made, helped uh, lock out the media a little bit because it was going crazy on the outside. But we were so focused on our little camp and in our bubble that it didn't affect us. Yeah. And there'll be, I'm sure when like we chat here, this manager's left this club, this one's coming. I'm sure her name's going to be mentioned as well when it comes to uh, other teams. I'm, I'm not talking women's teams, I'm talking, you know, the men's game here as well. But you'd be desperate to try and make sure you keep her ahead of such a huge summer, of course, next year. Yeah, I mean, she's been, she's been in, massive for us, mm. uh, a key, key factor to why we won. Um, and yeah, it's what, what we've been waiting for. And yeah, she set the standard every single day. She did. Right, let's talk about all 23 of you England players signing this document, which, which was an open letter sent to the Prime Minister, calling for girls to be given more access to football in schools. Tell us about that, how that came about. And, and it's, it's come about and been done very quickly, which was important. Yeah, uh, we just wanted to make sure that the girls have access to play. It was actually uh, Lotta's idea. She... she wanted to ride on the fact that we, we just won a, a major tournament and we all completely agreed with her. She, everyone got behind her and it's spot on. It's exactly what we want to do. Only 63% of girls can play in, in schools, which is shocking for, for us to hear and us to see about. So we wanted to get behind the initiative and try and make that opportunity even better for girls out there. So this legacy can last even longer. Did you, did you find that when you were all kind of chatting about how, how you, I guess, came through and, and played, that you had a lot of similarities, that there were quite a few of the girls who maybe didn't play at school at all? Yeah, for sure. And I played most of my football at a young age through a boys' team, um, mm. which was great. I mean, I enjoyed it because by nature they're fitter and faster and stronger, so it was always a, a competitive game. But at the same time, a lot of girls might be disencouraged to go and join a boys team so um, they need a girls team to to start their journeys off so if we can encourage that and and help set the standard for that then we'll be doing our job mm. and i guess your experience as a young girl who, who wanted to play football it's quite often because we've got brothers who play mm -hmm. so you kind of want to get stuck in with them or you might have a cousin or you're in a neighborhood in a cul-de-sac or whatever where you've got loads of boys playing as opposed yeah. to now you've got kids it shouldn't matter whether you've got a male in your life 
What about your story? Yeah, I grew up with uh, two older brothers who were football crazy. I came from a, a football household, so my route into the game was quite inevitable, really. Mm. Um, so I started knocking around with them and, and getting involved in their teams and then kind of stemmed from there and then went on to find a boys' team, then find a girls' team and then go on to academy football. Was that helped through your school then as well? Yeah, my school were really supportive um, ever since I joined. They actually sent me to county schools trials and then it went to English schools trials um, and then it went to academies and then England. So they definitely started the journey off and then, um, yeah, got me involved at an early age. I guess one of the benefits of playing with, with boys, and we, we've heard your dad talk about how you had to play with boys when you were younger, that it actually has helped make you the player you are now. Yeah, you have to toughen up quite quickly when you play with the boys. So, um, yeah, it, it was an important part of my career, but at the same time, we don't want that to have to be. Um, we want girls to feel valued in the sport, um, and hopefully after this tournament they will. And my goodness, you've got plenty more to look forward to, of course. We'll talk about WSL season a little bit later, but let's just focus on the next time you're going to be getting together with your England players, because it's European champions up against the world champions at a sold-out Wembley. It was sold out within 24 hours. How inspiring is that? Amazing. Um, I think that's exactly what you want. We loved playing at Wembley in front of the sold-out crowd, and to be able to do it again um, against the world champions is is going to be an amazing experience i think that we want to test ourselves against the best every time we play so yeah it'll be a great journey and and we're really looking forward to it right it's only a year until the world cup it's in new zealand and australia very far from home but it's it's going to be great will this team now believe they can i guess end the americans dominance in that tournament you're certainly going to shake it up aren't you yeah i think that we have a belief in the squad that that we know how good we are like as a as a player that trains with them every day the standard is just sky high and i think that we're ready to go out to tournaments and compete like like you just seen at the european championships so we're looking forward to to testing ourselves against more of the world's best and uh yeah going from there okay going to be back